Good morning, church. May God richly bless you this morning. And may he continue to bless you and bless us as he has in the past. Amen. Amen. This morning's message is a reminder that although you may think the elections are over, they are not. presidential elections of 2016 I can say were different <laughs> and that's an understatement I think unforgettable unforgettable the two candidates at the end who remained were poles apart <clears throat> and many were surprised of the outcome even those who voted for the president-elect were surprised of the outcome. But the process of election is a special process because each citizen gets to go into a booth, you and nobody else, and vote. It is not a group effort of voting. No, individual people voted um, individually, just one at a time and the election boils down to individual decisions individual decisions but did you know that the concept of election is also a biblical concept It's found in the Bible and there is a biblical election going on right now and that's why it is not over quite yet and the election spoken in the Bible makes this past election seem as it had small impact compared to the impact and results of the biblical election. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father in heaven, if we open your word. I ask that your Holy Spirit may come into our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Whatever decisions... Mr. Donald Trump, President Donald Trump makes within the next weeks, months, years. Those decisions are temporary decisions. But the biblical elections are, have a more of a permanent impact. A permanent decision. The election in, in the Bible have permanent effects. And the voters, or the us, that are involved in the biblical election don't vote in a booth, in a room, or in a little space. But it is a vote that is done in the heart. And that is done every single day. Even as you go through your week, you're casting votes. This past week, you were casting votes. This next week coming, you will be casting votes that will affect your life forever. And so when the biblical election, which is the election that really counts, is over, those results cannot be changed. Those results cannot be changed. I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And the Bible's first mention of election comes to us from God comes from heaven Ephesians chapter 1 <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 the Bible says blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love who elected us first God did and how long ago 
before the world was created, God chose humanity. God chose you and me. Before the foundations of the world, He chose us to be holy and without blame before Him in love. Look at 2 Thessalonians. Just keep on turning there, going down the, the, the New Testament. Once you get to the T's, you get to 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Says, but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for what? salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. From the very beginning, even before you and I were born, even before this world was created, God elected us. Even knowing that many would reject Him, He still chose us. He still chose us. The election started in heaven by God choosing us by God choosing us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that God chose me. That God chose you. He elected us to give us the opportunity to elect Him. He provided this opportunity to vote for Him. And actually, if you turn to Matthew chapter 24, Jesus and Paul use this word elect more than anyone else in the New Testament and we can see there in Matthew chapter 24 as we're going to Matthew chapter 24 can someone just briefly tell me what Matthew 24 is about the second coming the signs of the second coming the signs of the end and there in Matthew 24 verse 22 Jesus himself says, and unless those days, those days are the last day that he's talking about, the end time events, the signs, and unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So God will shorten the last days for whose sake? For the elect's sake. And who are elected? We are. We are. The whole world is elected. God has elected everyone for salvation. And here Jesus is saying, I'm going to shorten the days for your sake. And notice verse 24. <clears throat> for false Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even who? The elect. And who again are the elect? We are. So there's a chance, a possibility that even we, the elect, can be deceived. There are certain things that are going to go on for our sake. God is going to shorten the last days. Praise the Lord. See, being elected by God means that we are selected to go through trials and tests. That we be not deceived. They have to go through trials and testing. Being elected by God is not a blank check to heaven or a walk in the park. But there must be an election of us electing God as well. <coughs> See, praise the Lord that God is the first one to make the move to elect us. He chose us. But we have to respond to that election. And one of my favorite verses that demonstrates that is in the book of Joshua Joshua chapter 24 where Joshua there 24 verse 15 Joshua 24 15 just makes it plain and gives us the options is giving is giving Israel the option to make their choice to make their election to make to choose he says and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord choose for yourself this day who you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river 
or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, Joshua says, we're going to serve who? The Lord. We have to make an election of who we're going to serve. Whether it's the gods of the entertainment, the gods of the, sinful of the temporary sinful pleasures that exist in this world, the gods that Satan puts out there, or, as Joshua says, you can serve them, but you need to elect who you're going to choose. Who are you going to serve? You're going to serve the world and its temporary pleasures. I must say that. There are pleasures in the world, but they are temporary, friends. They are temporary. Nothing compared to the pleasures of eternity that God has prepared for us. There are even pleasures for Christians in this world as well. Amen. There is plenty of pleasures for God's people in this world. But here Joshua wanting is, is appealing for us to elect, to make a choice. Who are you going to serve? And in the context of the last days, Luke also makes, gives that appeal in Luke chapter 9. No, I'm sorry, 21. Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter... Luke chapter 21 beginning in verse 11 Luke chapter 20 Luke chapter 21 beginning in verse 8 I'm sorry here Jesus is talking about the last days and the, and the signs and of the end in verse 8 and he said take heed that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near, therefore do not go after them. But when you hear of wars and what? And commotions, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass. But the end will not come immediately. Verse 10. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom and there will be great earthquake in various places and famines and pestilence and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven but before all these things they will lay their hands on you and persecute you. Delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake but it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony therefore because of this because of this therefore settle in your heart not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Amen. Amen. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends. And they will send some of you to your deaths. Friends, we have to be grounded on the rock and just how we casted our votes personally alone these votes with God are casted personally and alone. Uh, your salvation is only between you and God. And you pray and you hope that your spouse and your family also have their own personal salvation with them and God. Because here, verse 16 is a, is a very sad text, but a very biblical and true text. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends. We cannot hold on to earthly relationships more above God, our relationship with God. We cannot, friends. Verse 17 says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head shall be lost. In your patience, what? Possesses your soul. 
In your patience of what? Why does Luke say this? In your patience possesses your soul. Other versions say, in your patience is your salvation. Patience of what? Hmm? What did we just, what did we just read? Hello? We have to be grounded in our faith with God. Here, Jesus, Jesus himself is telling, is, this is in red in my Bible. And Jesus is saying there's going to come hard times. Many will be deceived. You may be betrayed. You may be betrayed by your parents, by your wife, by your best friend. Hold on. Do not worry of what you will say. I will tell you. You will be testimonies to me, to others. But I will save you in your patience, possess your soul. You have to be electing every day where you stand. Electing every day who is your God, who you serve. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that is something that we should say every single day. And for me and my house, today we will serve the Lord. And tomorrow, today we will, we will serve the Lord. Let's not forget that many, as Matthew 7 says, that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But those who do the will of my Father. So here, we must elect. We must choose. Because friends, if we don't choose... The election that God made for us does not stand. That's why Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 tells us, and if you want to look to Romans chapter 8, verse 33, Romans chapter 8, verse 33, our election by God has to stand. And it stands by us electing Him every day of our lives. Every moment that passes by. No matter what may come across or who may come across we choose to serve and love the lord there romans chapter 8 verse 33 it says who shall bring a charge against god's elect Amen. who it is god who justifies now look at romans 9 verse 11 for the children not yet being born nor having done any good or evil that the purpose of God according to electing might stand not of works but of him who calls our election has to stand he has elected you but now it has to stand the devil cannot take the devil should not take your election that God has already elected you for salvation how does the election that God made for you stand? It stands by your responding to Him, friends. Every day. If you look at the meditation in the back of your bulletins, there from Patriots and Prophets, page 208. Follow along with me there. It says, Every soul is elected who will work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. How many souls? Every soul is elected who will work out his own salvation. Now, don't get hung up on the word work. There, the word work is choosing. We need to choose. There is a work that we need to do, and that's choosing God. We have to choose his will. He is, he is elected who will put on the armor and fight the good fight of faith. He is elected who will watch unto prayer, who will search the scriptures and flee from temptation. He is elected who will have faith continually and who will be obedient to every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The provisions of redemption are free to all. The results of redemption will be enjoyed by those who have complied with the conditions. What conditions are those? We have to elect God. We have to elect God. We have to, it says here, He is elected who will put on the armor of God. 
You have to put on the armor of God. You have to fight the good fight. You have to watch unto prayer, search the scriptures, flee from temptation, have faith continually, be obedient to every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. These are the characteristics of the elect that God has, friends. That's why Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3 gives us the same characteristics that God has elected on who his elects are. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 the Bible says, Therefore as the elect of God, and who is that? Us. We are the elect of God. That should just be a joy. Just pausing and thinking. God elected me. And you see, it's not like each other here where we may not know each other personally. But God does. God knows my secrets. God knows my trials, my temptation. God knows my heart. And yet He still elected me and chose me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God... Holy and beloved, put on tender mercies. Notice, put on because we don't have it. <laughs> put on tender mercies, put on kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Put on bearing with one another. Amen and amen. And forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all, these things put on what? Put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, friends. These are the characteristics of God's elect. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on, and there it is, as the elect of God put on the mercies the kindness the long suffering the forgiveness the patience why do we put that on because Christ did it for us Christ did it for me Christ did it for me every day we have a chance to cast our vote were you kind were you merciful were you patient were you forgiving? By our actions, we are casting our votes. And each day of your life, you're in the election. And I want to vote for God. Because the opposite, I either vote for God or I vote for myself. And I want to vote for God. How many votes did God get this week from you? This is just for you to meditate and contemplate between you and the Lord. How many votes did God get from you this week? How many did you get for yourself? God elected me believing that by His power I can be this person that Colossians talks about. If it were not so, it wouldn't be in the scriptures. If it were not so, it would not be here where Paul says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, God chose us first, friends. And that's why our scripture reading there in 2 Peter chapter 1, 
That's why our scripture reading tells us to hold on to our elect. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. Excuse me. To make it more sure. Are you doubted? Or do you doubt that God has elected you? You shouldn't, friends. You should be confident that God loves you with a love that you can never imagine. Just because He's just by Him sending His Son to die for you and for me while we were still enemies of God should, we should recognize and be certain that God loves us and has elected us and therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. Don't let the devil take away your election. That you are elected by God. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For as an entrance, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The election for the 45th president, I think it's the 45th, is over. The voting booths have been put away, but the election that I'm talking about and that the scripture is talking about is still happening now. It's still continuing. Each of us casts our votes this past week and will continue to be casting our votes as we live day by day. And so I want to read to you, when this election is over, the biblical election is over, would you like to see the inauguration of Jesus Christ? It's found in, it's found in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse 5. By this time, the biblical election is done. Here, Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, in his inauguration, Revelation 19, verse 5, it says here, John in, in vision, <clears throat> Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude at the sound of many waters and at the sound of mighty thundering, saying what? Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself what? Ready. Ready. <clears throat> and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteousness acts of the saints. The king who elected us, friends, God who elected us, is inviting us to be part of this ceremony right here. I want to be the ones saying hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Amen. How about you? Amen. There is no fee for this election. You just have to decide by your votes daily that you will be there. If there is any place that you need to RSVP, it's to this place right here. It's to this inauguration, to this part. Because once Revelation 22, verse 11, which says, He who is unjust, let him be unjust. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him continue to be righteous. And he who is holy, let him be holier still. When that proclamation is made, the biblical election, the election that really matters, is over. Is done. Once Revelation 22, 11 and those words are done, he who is unjust, let him be unjust. He who is righteous, let him be righteous. When that proclamation is said, the biblical election is over. 
Have you made your election today? Have you casted your vote for God? It needs to be a daily election. A daily election. I will serve the Lord today. When you wake up tomorrow, I will serve the Lord today. And when you wake up on Monday, I will serve the Lord today. But not just service of mouth, as Jesus says, but here, as we saw in Colossians and in the meditations, by the testimony of Jesus, we put on the armor, we fight the good fight, we watch unto prayer, we search the scripture, we flee temptations, we have faith continually, we are obedient to every word that comes out of God's book. Have you made that election, friends? And if you have, I invite you to make it again and again. Until those words in Revelation 22. And you will be found in the words that say, Let him who is righteous still be righteous. Let him who continues to practice mercy continue to be merciful. Let him who is loving continue to be loving. Let it not be said, let him who is selfish continue to be selfish. Unforgiving, well, continue being unforgiving. God forbids that for anyone in this sanctuary. It is my desire and my prayer that every single one of us elect God and His righteousness and that His righteousness may be in us, imbued in us and put in us. For every soul is elected who will work out his own salvation. He is elected who will put on the armor of God. He is elected who will watch into prayer. He is elected who will search the scriptures. He or she is elected who will flee temptations. He or she is elected who will have faith continually. And he and she is elected who will be obedient to God, friends. Have you made your election today father in heaven lord <clears throat> our earthly election for this country is over and i still believe and trust that you have this world in your hands i do not fear man we do not fear man but Lord we fear you and we want to continue to elect you every single day of our lives that our, no matter what may happen here our soul is secured in you our anchor is secured in the rock of Jesus Christ our faith our feet are planted on the solid ground so Lord, please help us that while election is still happening, that we may elect you and not ourselves. We may elect to put on your armor, put on your mercies. <clears throat> Lord, forgive us for the times that we have not elected you. And we have elected other things that draw us away from you. Forgive me, Lord, for if there's anything that I've done to displease you. But I ask, I thank you, because if we confess our sins, you are true, you are true and faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you. Help us to every day get up if we have fallen to continue electing you bless your church bless this church in jesus name i pray amen, amen.